At this time of year, it can be difficult for wildlife to find food, shelter and water. In this video, we're going to be looking at ways we can support wildlife in our gardens during winter. So we're just going to top up these bird feeders. Sunflower husks and crushed seeds are great for wildlife at this time of year, particularly birds, as they don't need to waste energy removing the husks. Peanuts are rich in fat and protein and are popular with tits, greenfinches, house sparrows, nuthatches, woodpeckers and siskins. When crushed or grated, they also attract robins, dunnocks and occasionally wrens. As with any time of year, it's really important that we make sure that we keep our bird feeders clean to stop the spread of viruses and diseases. We all have waste in our kitchens and a great way to reduce that food waste is to feed it to the birds and wildlife in our gardens. Things like rice, cheese, grains and cereals are really good options. Here I have some stale oats, nuts and cereals that I'm just going to scatter into the garden. Fat-based foods are brilliant for providing wildlife with highly nutritious fats and carbohydrates during winter. A simple homemade version is taking some lard or suet and mix it in with dried fruit, nuts, oats, some cheese um, and then laying it out for the wildlife in the garden. Remember, once you start providing food for wildlife in your gardens, it's really important to keep it up all year round. This is because you're attracting more wildlife into the garden, increasing the population, and you need more food and nutrients to support that population. It's essential for wildlife to have access to water all year round. That can be in the form of a pond, big or small, a bird bath, or even a small pot sunk into the ground. Here I've got a Tupperware container. I'm just gonna dig a little hole and then fill it up with water. And it's ideal for those smaller insects and invertebrates to have access to water. If you have a pond in your garden, a great way to stop it from freezing during winter is to place a plastic ball in it. The wind will move the ball around and keep the water moving to stop it from freezing. Consider planting trees and shrubs that bear fruit. This spring I planted this crabapple tree. It's a fantastic species to have in your garden. It doesn't get too big. You get the beautiful white and pink blossom in spring. Um, and then you get these gorgeous berries that turn from green to red during autumn. They're a particular favourite of blackbirds and starlings, but also as they drop off the tree, hedgehogs can scurry around and pick them up. Other great options include blackthorn, hawthorn, wild cherry, rowan and holly. So if you allow some of your rose flowers to die on the plant, they'll eventually form rose hips. Rose hips are actually a berry, and for some cultivars of roses, they're a real favourite for wildlife, particularly birds, in our gardens. True to British weather, it's now absolutely chucking it down, but we're going to carry on regardless. So there's two common types of nest boxes for small birds for your gardens. The first is um, a small hold uh, box like this. Um, this is ideal for sparrows and blue tits especially. Um, another style of box is an open fronted box, which is fantastic for, for robins. So today we're going to fit this box ideal for, for sparrows and blue tits. Open fronted nest boxes should be hidden from view. Attach your box to a wall or fence that has shrubs or creepers growing against it. Small hole boxes are best placed one to three metres above the ground, but avoid sites where foliage obscures the entrance hole as a clear flight path is important. A log pile is a perfect habitat for small mammals, invertebrates and amphibians. Here I have a mixture of larger logs, 
Um, I've chosen dead wood because that decomposing process has already started. I have some twigs here and then also some leaves. What I'm going to do is start to pile up these logs and make almost like a lasagna of layers. So going from the larger logs to the sticks and the leaves. The final thing I want to talk about is leaving healthy herbaceous plants and hollow stems during winter. This provides great habitat for different insects and invertebrates, uh, but can also be a food source for birds and other animals in your gardens during winter, particularly those seed heads uh, that are left and look beautiful in winter gardens. So that's it for today's video. We hope you found it useful. We'd love to hear from you in the comments section if you get any visitors to your gardens and what you like to do to support wildlife in winter. Catch you in the next one. Thank you.